If you're collecting data with your Raspberry Pi, then chances are you're going to want to log that data into a CSV file or database or both so that you can begin using it for analysis, applications, etc. Well, today I'm going to show you how to do both. In this first video, I'm going to build out the code for a CSV data logger, and then in the second video, I'm going to reuse about 90% of that code to build a SQL database logger using SQLite. Okay, first things first, open up the command prompt and then update and upgrade git apt. Next, I'm going to use the psutil library, so I'll go ahead and install that with pip. Now that psutil is installed, I'm going to open the Python interpreter and run two of the functions that I'm going to collect data from, just to give you some context about some of the code I'm going to write. You can see that these functions return a tuple containing various things that I'm going to measure. Also, take note of the data types. It looks like we have a mixture of integers and floats. This will come in handy when I build the SQLite database tables. Okay, let's go ahead and set up the project folder. I'm going to navigate to Documents and then create a folder called Data Logger. Then within that folder, I'm going to create another folder called Data that I'm going to use to store the CSV files. Finally, I'm going to type IDLE and open up the Python interpreter and code editor. Feel free to use another code editor if you wish. Open up a new file in your editor and save it in the current directory as Data Logger. Or actually, let's call this logger CSV pi since we're going to make another logger with SQLite. The first thing I'm going to do is import some libraries that I'm going to need. CSV, psutil, date time, and this is where I'm going to get the timestamp. And sleep from the time module. This is going to allow me to insert a time delay between data pools. Okay, now let's get a class called logger. I'm going to initialize this with one variable, and it's going to be a dictionary of items that I'm going to export. And the reason for this is because, as you know, dictionaries contain key value pairs. So my idea for approaching this problem is that I can use the dictionary key to store the file name or table name, and the dictionary value to store the data for either the CSV file or the database. Before I flesh out the actual code, I'm going to outline some of the things that I'm going to need. I'm going to need a collect data method in order to pull data from the sensors or functions that are returning it. I'm going to need a print data method that I can use to print a selection of nicely formatted text on the screen. This isn't strictly necessary, but it is handy for monitoring progress, and it's easy to see when something's gone wrong. I obviously need a method to log the data, so I'm going to create a log data method. Finally, I'm going to define a main function outside of the class so I can test and run my script. Okay. Let's flesh out some of this code. It's always a good practice to put a description of what your function or method is designed to do, and if needed, to describe the arguments in return data. However, in this case, a simple description will do. As I mentioned, I want to approach this with a dictionary where the dictionary key stores the file or table name, and the dictionary value stores the data I'm collecting. So with that in mind, I'm going to create a key with the names that I want for the file and table, then I'm going to assign the value as a tuple that's returned by the psutil function. The one thing I want to add here is a timestamp, so I'm going to use the datetime.now function to get that and then combine it with the psutil data into a single tuple. You'll notice that I've put an asterisk next to the psutil object. This is a shortcut for unpacking a tuple. What's happening here is that I'm unpacking all of the items in the tuple returned by the psutil function, and then combining that with the timestamp into a single tuple. If I don't unpack the tuple, then I'll basically get a tuple inside of another tuple, which I don't want. Next, I'm going to do the same thing with virtual memory by creating a key value pair for that in the data dict. Okay, now that that's done, let's work on the print function. Start by typing in a short description. I'm not going to print every piece of data that's being collected in this example, just a sample to make sure that everything's working as it should. When this prints out onto the screen, I want to make sure that each iteration is separated by a line so it's easy to see where one ends and the other starts. I'm going to add a dash times 120, and that should get it far enough across the screen. Next I'm going to print the date and time. I can get the date from the first position index of one of the tuples that I'm going to, to collect, so I'll put 0 as the index. Then I'm going to do a little string formatting for the year, month, day, and then hours, minutes, seconds. Finally, I need to bring in the tuple, so I type self.datadict, and then I'll retrieve the value for the CPU key. You can see that I've put the asterisk in front, and the reason for this is that I need to get the date inside that tuple, 
and currently the index only refers to the first item inside the format parentheses, which is the entire tuple. So I need to unpack it with an asterisk in order to get the date. Next I'm going to do the same exercise with the CPU and virtual memory elements. I'm just going to add some number formatting to make it easier to look at using the data types we looked at earlier. Okay, now that I have the collect data and print data methods, I can actually run this and test the code so far. So let's go ahead and add this to the main function, and then I'll add the logger bit later. I'm going to create a logger object by calling the logger class. Next, I'm going to use the collect data method to retrieve the data with psutils. Next, I'm going to print the data to the screen with the print data method, and press F5 to run. Uh-oh, I'm missing something here. It looks like I've mistyped some, uh, it should be data dict, not dict. Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, good, it worked. Now, it only ran once because I don't have a loop programmed in yet, but if I run that function again, I should get another set of results. There we go, good. Hey guys, if you're enjoying this video, can you do me a favor and smash that like button? Okay, let's continue. Now let's finish the log data method. I'm going to type in a short description. Because I'm collecting from multiple sources, I'm going to, to use multiple CSV files for this. So I'm going to need to iterate over the dictionary of items to get everything that I need. This is equivalent to saying for each key value pair in the dictionary, but I figured file and data were more meaningful. Next, I'm going to open the CSV file in the data directory that I created earlier. I have the file name already, but I need to add the entire path with an extension in order to actually open the file. I'm going to open the file in append mode, which is what the A plus means, so that whatever I write to this file, it's going to be appended to the existing data. Finally, I'm going to set the new line argument equal to nothing. And the reason is that if I don't do this, then Python will include a carriage return after every insert, which effectively adds a blank row between each insert, and that's definitely not what we want. Next, I'm going to create a CSV writer object. This object is what I'm going to use to write the rows of data that I'm collecting, and that is stored in the data dictionary. In the end, what should be happening is I'll use the dictionary key to access the file and the dictionary value to insert the relevant data into the file. Because I'm using a with clause, the file will close automatically when the process completes. If you open a file or connect another way, then you'll need to make sure you manually close the file or connection with the close method. Now that that's complete, I can add the logger method to my main function, but before I do that, let's take a look at the data folder that I created earlier so that I can show you that there's nothing there. And as you can see, it's empty for now. I'm going to add the log data method after the collect data method because I want to make sure that the data gets written before it's printed to the screen. Okay, let's go ahead and try this out. And so far so good. If I navigate to the data folder, I can see two files, each corresponding to the keys in my dictionary. And if I open these up, everything appears to be in order. There's only one record now, but I'm going to set up a loop and then we can run this for as long as we want. Going back to my main function, I'm going to add a while loop so that this will continue to run until I stop it. I need to also change the indent on these items. Finally, I want to create a slight delay between data pulls, so I'm going to put in a 5 second delay using the sleep function. And let's run this. Good. You can see from the timestamps that I'm getting the the data in about five second increments, which is what I expected, and this will continue to run until I stop it. Let's open up the CSV files and take a look there. Very good. It appears that everything is imported as expected, so let's take a look at the other one. Excellent, everything is as expected. Perfect. At this point, the CSV logger is really ready to go. This is a simple example, but you can adapt this type of logic to many different situations. In the next video, I'm going to change just a few lines of code and show you how to set up a very simple SQLite database to create a database logger that will give you a lot more flexibility in managing and using your data. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.